Hello, everyone. Episode 31, talking with Donato and Ursula. The lady so nice, we had to have her on twice. <laughs> Ursula, we got to get started with just, just one thing. Ursula, too many people think that the grass is greener somewhere else, but grass is green where you water it. Am I right? Yes, that's cool. So why, why do people always want to jump to where the grass is greener? When should a person cut bait? You said cut bait? Cut bait. When should they cut bait and give up? Let me tell you. The grass kind of is greener sometimes on the other side. Like you said, it's what you water. But I say when the grass is, you know, starting to get a little brown. <laughs> <laughs> you forget to water it, you know, you're taking it for granted. You're comfortable with it. Yes. And, and then you're like, you know what? Over there looks nice. So let me, let me go ahead and make a move. No, so that's, I, that's the part. That's the part right there. I believe that you it, it's a constant assessment is what you're saying. You're constantly, yeah. you're checking, you're looking, you're checking, you're looking. Okay. You do pros and cons. Because I, I just recently was full-time telework. Yeah. 99% of the time, you know the deal. And I yeah. went back to work, full-time back to work, 99% now with 1% telework. Ooh. And I know it's, it's an adjustment, but you know what? The grass is greener. <laughs> <laughs> With it, I'd rather go in every day than deal with the nonsense. There's always going to be some type of nonsense. So, so you tell the work was too much. Sometimes people are too afraid to get to that greener grass, right? Yeah, come to their comfortable. comfortable earlier. Yeah, I was very comfortable. How can you not be comfortable? You're home all day. You tell the work if you got doctor's appointment, you go just get your aid and done, and you know, call. But there's always some jerk or somebody that's just a little much and you're like, man, we're telling work and you're still a jackass. Yes. <laughs> I want to go work with a jackass. <laughs> All right. Snoop Dogg posted, after much consideration and conversation with my family, I decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time. Oh. Now, we're when he getting these things from a bunch of people jumped off with them. I mean, you name it, and they were like, hey, I'm giving up smoking too. If if Uncle wow. Snoop can do it, I can do it, and they did it. Then, that might have been Thursday. Yeah. By Sunday, he posted a picture of him holding a blunt. Shut up. He fell off the wagon. Happened? You know what? He, he should have never went on that wagon or never went on that wagon publicly like all loud about it you know people want to stop smoking stop smoking you ain't you don't have to tell everybody but i agree i you agree. know it's like okay because first of all the first thing you do on thanksgiving when you see all your cousins that you haven't seen in a long time there's always that one cousin that's going to want to go for a walk yes <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to go with them go for a walk so it's like me i would i personally if i'm gonna quit a habit i'm not telling anybody because they constantly, people will constantly bring it up. And it's yeah. like, you know, like, I say I'm going to quit candy. Then I'm, you know, they find candy wrappers in my van. Hidden. <laughs> <laughs> that don't mean Mama you did it, though. It's in there, though. Oh, there you go. I did it. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry. I was trying to. I was yeah, trying I'm to a lot. I like the lollipop. So they know I'm a lollipop bandit. <laughs> so he did that. And. The problem was a lot of people went with him. And then when he walked it back, now those guys are looking bad. So were they followers or are they leaders? So if you did that, do you now stand on the principle? Because you already convinced yourself that you could do it. Do you just right. do it now? Yeah, they they could just do it now. He, You know what? Everyone falls off the wagon. They get on a wagon, yes. they fall off, get back on. And they can you know do the same thing that he did eventually down the line. But I mean, he just, did he like cold turkey? I'm stopping. Right. You see 
he was trying to pull the turkey. Try. So t- sometimes you gotta, you know, do it a little bit of time. Be like, you know what, I'm not gonna smoke for maybe these couple of days, and then you know, add more and more into it. But it, he's been smoking that for a very long time, and we all know it's addictive. There you go. There so. You go. In that same vein, <clears throat> Snoop Dogg recently was telling a story how him and Nipsey Hussle weren't supposed to be in there for We Are the World Part Two. Hmm. So, Ursula, I got to know, has there ever been a time you were somewhere you weren't supposed to be? Maybe you snuck in? Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> what had happened? <laughs> I'm, um, I don't know why, but... I've definitely snuck into a couple weddings oh. just at the end just at the end they were partying at the end and that's because when i was younger i worked at a hotel i was a cleaning person I yeah. was in high school i was a cleaning person it was during that summer and i used to see these weddings and whatnot and i'm like they really don't have security or whatnot you know <laughs> so you know at the end i'm gonna sneak in get me some cake or you know say congratulations or whatever if i see <laughs> hopefully Hopefully, I won't even see the bride and groom. I just want to eat a little of their food, you know, just kind of seeing if I can't sneak in without really getting caught. The um, original wedding crasher. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Freaky. Very, I, like I have said it. You are very interesting, and there needs to be a movie made or at least an audio book about your life. <laughs> it would be the fun. wedding crasher story is phenomenal. It, hey, that's. You have no idea what you find when you're when you clean rooms. I've found so much stuff and been so many, you know, hey. I worked at a hotel, stuff. a really nice yeah. one in the college town, in my college town, and uh, uh, I did room service. That's what I did. Okay. That's dangerous. See, I didn't even have to really deal with people. It's pretty <laughs> dangerous. I'm good it's with dangerous. people. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was um it was a challenge. It, I, I'll just say it was a challenge because you get to some people and they got all these problems. And I said, my man, I came straight from the kitchen to here. If them fries ain't cold enough, there ain't no other way. I can't fly. I take an elevator up. I bring it straight to you. What else you want? Yeah. yeah. Nothing, I can, nothing I can do about that. The problem is there went my tip. And that's why I'm getting more and more mad when I talk to you because I know you ain't going to give me no tip now. Yeah. <laughs> The See, I didn't have to talk to you. <laughs> I was just cleaning rooms and I had the night shift and I just cleaned the rooms. They didn't finish cleaning that day if they were empty. So it wasn't hard. But I did see a lot of stuff. And I also did the floors in the bar after they left. Oh. So I gotta say about that. They were like, I'd come in, they would give me dinner. Okay. Yep. They fed me dinner from the hotel. But once the bar was empty about one o'clock in the morning. I would just do sweep and mop for them and hello. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so, <I clear. laughs> it was just me person, and all the help all there. <laughs> when a person asks you if the hotel gig is worth it, are you going to say yes? Because I am going to say yes either way, though. The experience is okay. But yeah. I mean, like you said, last, last time, these young folks, they, they built different. So the hotel gig might not be for them anymore. Yeah, it might not be yeah. for them. They don't feel, unless it's, you know, like you said, you worked at a nice hotel. I worked at, like, um, what was it, like the Sheraton or something? It was all right. <laughs> Sheraton, uh, you're nice. You're nice, Sheraton. But I'm, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't stay at the one I worked at. They need an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. It's a small town. They need an upgrade. The, I was a... Uh... I was the tour guy because the out of towners that I encountered wanted advice. They wanted right. directions. They wanted opinion. I am not short on any of that. So I don't know. And I think, I think that's part of what I enjoyed is being the representative. I wasn't even from that town. I was just in town for college, but I didn't want to break their heart. <laughs> tell them. And they didn't have GPS and all that back then. Nah, that's nah. Why. You, no you had map quests you could print out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everything's easier. I'm. A, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say something to you, Uh-oh. and we're gonna get a little feedback here. I wish someone would have said that 
to the three-year-old me that couldn't say no. But by 19, we're all strong enough to make choices that affect the rest of our lives. If you can't say no, you're not built for it. Take that midnight train now before you get yourself in trouble. That is Paula Jai Parker. Are you familiar with who she is? No. Okay. So she was in Friday. She was in uh, Hustle, Flow. Um, she's a 56-year-old actress. She looks like you and I. And she was responding to Cassie and her sexual assault, abuse claims against Diddy. Yeah. And the fact that she waited until now, because when Paula put this out, she faced a lot of backlash as people called her out for victim blaming. So what she's saying is you come to Hollywood, you're trying to right. get a record deal. In this case, you know, New York bad boy records. Right. You're dating a guy when you're 19 who's putting you up in five-star hotels. You didn't have a problem then. Then you get on. You get your record deal. You, you get the paparazzi. Right. Years later, after you're secure and remarried, you then want to file for $30 million in this suit. So what say you, Ursula? about Paula Jai Parker and her comments. Do you think she's victim blaming or is she pretty accurate? Okay, so let me see, let me get this straight. What she's saying is basically when you're 19, between 19 and late 30s, you grown, there's a lot of growing. So let me yes. see, is she saying we all change between 19 and 30? So, um, I can't tell. I got I got to hear her quote again now. But I'm on Cassie's side, 100%. Okay, I'll do it again. She, yeah. She said, I wish someone would have said that to the three-year-old me that couldn't say no. But by 19, we're all strong enough to make choices that affect the rest of our lives. Right. If you can't say no, you're not built for it. Take that midnight train now before you get yourself in trouble. Wow, it it's she's right on the border with that one. Yeah, it does kind of. Sound. <laughs> <laughs> it's right on the border. What say you? What's the border? Why why you say the border? Because she's like, why don't you say no to Diddy? But or I'm just not. I'm not gonna say Diddy. But why didn't she say no when she was 19? I don't think that abuse started when she was 19. Most abusers lead up to big time abuse, and it could have taken three, four years before it got real bad. Yeah. To be so, and then she's thinking, oh, it's my, like, you know, it's my fault, or I did this, or I should have done this better. So he probably made it seem like it was her, to be truthful. He's, a, you know, he's an abuser. We've heard of all these abuse stories. Tina Turner. Yes. Uh, okay, Tina Turner's movie showed us all. We were like, what? Uh, we didn't know Tina was going through that. You know, makeup no. covers a lot. So, yes, you know, does. and even what's her face? One of the um, Destiny Child, Michelle from Destiny Child, or was it, you know, one of them were being abused too. We didn't know that. You know, no. we didn't, yeah. One of the Destiny Child um, girl, ladies was getting abused. So yeah. for Cassie, I am 100%. That's right. If she, if she has any trauma, she put it on record. Put it that way. So it wasn't about um, she didn't go and say, hey, I want some money. I'm going to write a tell-all book. Well, we've seen what happened to some folks under that little umbrella of his that had tried to write tell-all books. Most of them did not make it. So, That's all I got to say about that. So nope, she didn't I, say I'm writing a book. She put that in public record in the court system. And here's my complaint. And everyone, everyone's able to, all the lawyers, TikTok lawyers, went on there and pulled that information and was able to read it it's in public forum. So funny you mentioned that. I see you know your history of this. I heard All it on the radio the so much. After the settlement, Kim Porter's wiki page gets taken down. Let me tell you. Suspicious? Oh yeah. I feel I feel so much for her. when she passed away, I was like, she is young. I understand she had pneumonia, but here's the thing. Why would you if this is my ex, why am I taking the kids and not taking care of you? 
why are they, why is she being left alone at home with Yamona and then she passes away? You know, what where was her support system? Where was her people at? Who was taking care of her? We we've never gotten that whole story. And I really, like I said, was it Albie? Who who else was in the hospital? A few people that said they were gonna write a little tell all book and all of a sudden they ended up gone. So, so <clears throat> To follow up mm -hmm. on that, you do remember Al B. Shore, right? Mm -hmm. Tim Porter's baby daddy. Okay. That, see, you are spot on. I, I, I like to see you're locked in on this. <laughs> so he went to Instagram and he posted. And now his posts are starting to draw some attention. He basically is saying, he, he said, Kind of almost something like this. I do agree my expectations about you were driven strictly from my optimistic view of you. Hoping your grimy ways would dissipate with age or and or the current state of affairs that will eventually uh, suppose that you were on the payroll and secretly part of the shenanigans. So... so he 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 came out and yeah. he said that he pretty much knew some history about Diddy. Yeah. That he had we heard. Know. And and now everybody's coming out. Would you say that right now there's been a few more sexual harassment, sexual assaults, uh most recently before we came on, uh, uh -huh. one just came across my screen about Jamie Foxx. Oh, wow. Would you say that the Me Too movement for hip hop is happening right now? Absolutely. As it should. Yeah. Because you know what? If, um, you know, it's bad that um, women, it's bad that we women didn't come forward sooner so that we could have maybe stop someone from going through the same shit we went through. But with him, like yeah. she said, that was a powerful man. He had, um, you know, he had a network. He beat her, remember? And that's what I heard the claim. This one lady, this one lady, she read the whole thing. He beat her, put her up in a high, in a high, in a hotel, kept her there for a week so she would heal, and all that. And his people were around her. She felt trapped. She wasn't able to get out. I was like, and you know, I was thinking at the time, I'm gonna burn down that whole goddamn hotel suite. But <laughs> in Maria, you know, what I'm saying that's my thought. Because I would have burned down that whole hotel suite to get out of it. But then still. Where are you going? Where, you know, if you don't have a support system outside of this life that you started, where are you going? Who are you, who can you go to where he still can't find you? So if you go to police, you know, go to police, file a claim, okay, file a little report or whatever, and they, okay, we're gonna do a restraining order. Mm, that piece of paper is not gonna stop an asshole, but I got the paper, you're not no. allowed, you're not allowed within 500 feet of me. So yeah. Um, I feel bad that she had to go through all that. I feel 100% for her, and I believe her 100%. I believe everything she wrote because I, he seems, you know, I, that's how I'm, I kind of always felt a little weird about um, Biggie and Tupac's death. I've always felt a little weird about that. Like, man, mm, I wonder what the real story it, is. His actions afterwards put him in a bad light. So here's yeah. two two more little items on this. As per the Source magazine, Diddy has been spotted for the first time since settling his lawsuit with his ex-lover and singer Cassie. He was spotted outside his Star Island Miami mansion. Diddy was spotted beside his chief of staff with his face buried in his hands. Here's one other little tidbit. He went to social media, I believe it was Instagram, after the settlement was over, and he was singing, not in a pleasant way, I'm still standing the entire song. Now, those are not the actions of a person, I'm pretty sure an innocent person would not do that. Right. It just seems, it seems like he's saying, I'm a billionaire, 30 million, okay, take it, but I'm good. That's what it feels yeah. like to me. It feels like that. Too. Am I am I reading too much of that? 
No, that's what it feels like. That's that narcissism in him. He's he's got that narcissism. I mean, do you remember when he was doing making the band, and one of the band members basically quit? He was like, um, "You're not gonna get paid. You're not gonna pay. I'm gonna fire you." He was like, "Fire me. Let me go." And that's what they all were saying. That you know, let me go. Let me go. Fire me. I don't care. I was like, yes. "Wow." Because that show, that little reality show that he did with making a band, and where's that band, anyways? That little reality show that he did put a lot of us on to, oh wow, this is him. This is how he acts. This is how. Yes. He yeah, and it took Cassie a long, a long time for her record to come out because probably he was promising, 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 and you know she's doing this and doing that, and he still hasn't put a record out. You know, it took him a long time probably put yeah. a record out. Cause I never, you know, I didn't look up her information or her and see if this, you know, I started to, and I was like, good for I just let it all go. I'm like, good for her. But yeah. think about it. He, he was stringing her along probably for a long time. Yes. And you know what? Now she decided to come out and she did it the right way. She didn't say, I'm writing a book, doing a movie. She said, I'm going to go ahead and sue you. Put this in the court filings, criminal court, right? That lawsuit was yes. only like 48 hours. I've never seen 30 million. <laughs> yeah, I think, she got, I think she got exactly. It's like this. Even if it was a jury by trial or a jury by judge, guess what? You was not. He didn't want that. He didn't out. want that smoke. Okay. He didn't want that yeah. smoke. It sounds to me like she knew where the bodies were buried. She knew where the bodies were buried. Yeah. And he didn't want to deal with that. And she was probably going to get his own staff, the people that was holding her in these places telling her you know he loves you he's buying her lavish gifts that whole week i just had to not. reconnect uh, sorry i had to do a server switch it's fine it's fine i just i feel for her I okay feel for her. i'm glad that she got i'm glad she got everything she wanted i hope she got every benefit she got 60 minutes Shoot, I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah at this point at this point, she may have thought the same thing. I, I probably should have hit him a little harder. That, that was a little too easy. I yeah. let him I let him buy his way out of it. I, I guarantee but, you that's how she feels. But everybody knows. Everybody knows now, which we all suspected. We all yes. Suspected. Yes. So you're right. So to that point, and this is irreparable damage. Yeah. it's I was like, does he know how many lawsuits is coming after that, after him now? He opened up that door. Was like, okay, I'm gonna pay to shut people up. Yes, <laughs> it's gonna be a flood now. It's gonna be a flood. I got another question. It's a. Re it's about relationships. Right, Let me explain this to you. During the preliminary hearing in ASAP Rocky's felony assault case, oh. prosecutors presented video evidence seemingly showing Rocky holding a handgun. Prosecutors say the footage was taken before Rocky allegedly shot ASAP Relly. In addition, another video was presented as evidence in which no people can be seen, but two loud sounds can be heard. Prosecutors say the sounds were two gunshots. As a result, the judge in Rocky's case ruled there was enough evidence for him to stand trial. Wow. Earth. Wow. You wait, Rihanna. She's a billionaire and she love you because she done gave you what? One, two, three kids. I mean, I think she pregnant I think again, so. right? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> wow. What, what you doing young buck? And then here's the other thing. You ain't got a bag man. You ain't got, you ain't got a, right. a goon. Right. Where's your people? Where's your you, people? You getting your hands dirty. That ain't a boss. That ain't a boss move. So is he in jail right now or something? Not yet. Man. So you could miss out on a queen, a rich wife, your kids, because you wanted to thug. I, I, I didn't even get to his career, his his rap career, and his opportunities. Ursula, I don't understand it. When is keeping it real, keeping it wrong? I think I think right about now. <laughs> Gunshots. When you fumble the bag, you're messing up. What did this person do to make him? Where, where, did he? Does he always carry a gun with him? I'm just wondering. Like, what is? Or who knows? 
they, yes. they said allegedly showing the picture of him. But man, I hope I hope this worked out for him as well. So but know. this is felony assault. That's, that's big time. That's big time right there. So the person did not pass away. No. So this person knows exactly who shot them. Yes. And they're saying it's him. Yes. And now there's video evidence. That in the, clearly in the video the says, oh, it's that's good enough. Yeah, that that's uh yeah, I'll allow it. Oh man. Yeah, good it ain't look. looking good. It ain't looking good. Okay. They looking good. If we were talk, he has he has a family. He's a dad. I want to pivot to dads. Okay. You see this face right here? Yeah. <laughs> that face. I'm looking in a quizzical manner. That's a face that starting Black Friday, most dads are gonna have <laughs> a month from there as they're watching their kids opening Santa presents. With no idea what's inside because mom has done it all. Tell me if I'm wrong. That's true. That's true. Why, why, like, why we do that? And and why do the ladies got to do all the heavy lifting? Explain that to me. Well, you know, here in our house, we don't celebrate like that with a bunch of gifts and whatnot. We just, oh. we've never, I've just never told you that. We never celebrate it big like that. Everyone who knows us. We don't go out and do a whole bunch of Christmas shopping. It stresses yeah. my family out. We did it one year with my, our God family where we did the uh, Secret Santa. Yes. And yeah. let me take my family. It was only $20 at Target. That was it. That was a deal because we had everybody was in college still. My whole family was stressed out behind that. We all was like, because we never did it that way. We just, you know, we had a nice dinner. And throughout the year, whatever they need or what, if they want to, you know, hey, they never was into name brand big time. So it's like, can I have these three hundred dollars shoes? We didn't, we never did stuff like that. But throughout the year, it's like, mom, you know what? I need new tennis shoes because these are getting worn down. No problem. Let's get you two pair of shoes. Call it a day. Didn't matter when it when it was. But we never did the um, shopping like that. We never did the shopping. Oh, so all things in moderation is what it sounds like. Yeah. Whenever you need something, then we're going to get it for you. But when they were younger, and that's why we stopped going, because when they were younger, we did used to, you know, I used to squirrel away gifts and whatnot. Right now, our neighbor is giving us gifts for his kids, and we got them in our garage. Wow. My husband came in with, like, six Amazon boxes. I was like, the hell did you order? <laughs> he, he was like, mind your business. I was like, that's for the neighbor, the neighbor's kids. That's those yes. are gifts. And you know what? My face is like this. What'd they get? <laughs> what they get? Because <laughs> that means that means Christmas Eve or around you know that week they're gonna be over here wrapping you know gifts and putting gifts together for whatever bikes or whatever. But yes, yeah, it's gonna it's be. Not it's, about that. it's not a bad idea to use your neighbors, little little neighborly. Neighbor. A little neighbor. And when they come over to wrap gifts, guess what? I got drinks. <laughs> yeah, got drinks. And a little, Oh, that's no, that, that bike. Yeah. No, nah, if that bike gets put together after y'all been sipping on sipping on, I ain't getting definitely, on that bike. Definitely happened one year. It was missing all the stickers. <laughs> that's how the bike gonna ride, just like that. <laughs> it's gonna wobble. It's gonna weave a wobble <laughs> down the road. They figured out the next day. You have to figure it out the next day. Absolutely. I got a question for you. It's Go a this it. or that. Oh, I love this one. Would you want to have dinner with Dwight Howard or five hundred thousand dollars? Five hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! I barely know who Dwight Howard is. <laughs> oh, I've heard the that's name. Fair. That's um, fair. I've, I've heard the name. I have to look him up. Let me look him up. Okay. Dwight Howard. And while see. you're looking him up, I'll I'll tell you the current stuff. So okay, he used to current. play for the Atlanta Hawks. He he grew up in Atlanta. He was a church kid. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of important to know. You you know culturally, uh, since he oh, looks yeah, like yeah. you and I raised in yeah. the church. Yeah. He um he was just held, I'm gonna say hostage by a former lover that said, I'm gonna put this information out there on your sexuality. Oh wow. And so to combat all of that, 
and the the case that was going to come up, yeah. he came out basically. Unfortunately, this is what made him come out and saying, okay, so no, I'm not going to deny that I've done some things with another man, uh, yeah. maybe inappropriately uh, handled myself with that man. Because that's what the alleged is. There's alleged uh, misconduct in their relations. So he says, so first of all, it's none of y'all's business what I do with my man no, partner in right. my bedroom. That's right. I don't care what y'all are doing in your bedroom. That's right. But you do know by saying it that way, people couldn't read into it. And they did. And so it is now known... And he has stated that he was in a relationship with the guy. Now, okay. the world knows that he is, I believe, homosexual. I don't I don't know. I don't want to sell it short if he's bisexual. But right. uh, he's had some some female girlfriends that. Um, I was about to say, didn't he have a female girlfriend? So maybe he's um, bisexual. Kind of been fake. Um, yeah. what, one has spoken out uh, in support of the time that she was with Dwight. So the question is, Dwight Howard of 500,000? Because there is a belief that most people would want to see him spill the tea, would want to gain that information in that conversation with them. So now that you know all of that, I could have mm -hmm. wowed you with some NBA stats. He was a good player. He's yeah. overseas in China now, though, because no team really wanted him. Um, wow. Up, now, with all of that info, would you yeah. still pick the 500000 500000 I'll take that tax-free, please, in small bills. <laughs> small bills? <laughs> small bills. Okay. Small bills. Okay. Hundreds, fifties, twenties. Give me some tens in there. I need to be able to peel that off. Peel that off. I'll take, take that tax-free. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he seems like an interesting person, but I don't really want to have a bunch of questions from him. Maybe because I'm not a big fan or... I don't didn't even you know I didn't even realize who he was, but yeah. you know your what happens in your bedroom is your business. Yes, you know yes, what happens is. behind closed doors is your business unless you let your stuff spill out into the street. You and your friends, you and your spouse. If y'all out in the streets fussing and arguing and this is all caught on camera, then it's you know then it's everyone's business because you outside screaming and yelling at each other, or you in the grocery store knocking people carts over and yelling at each other. Yes. Other than that. It's, it's at your home, whatever y'all want to do, you do you, do you, bro. Do you. Yeah. I'll take the five. I'll take the five hundred. And, and I understand that. But <laughs> since we're talking money, and that's <laughs> big money, Lala yeah, Anthony funny. shares a tip for all women. Uh, he says, focus on getting your own money so that mm -hmm. you can choose the man that you want. Yes. What Absolutely. say you about that advice? I say 100%. Um, some, so I've, I'm starting to realize and see a new generation of females that they are, they want, I don't know how to say it, gold diggers. Yes. <laughs> so there's a new generation of gold diggers out there. I have nothing against them. If they do, can do that and get it, you know, get what they want. That's perfect for them. That's perfect for them. But my dad has always told me, he's always said, you got to go make your own money. Don't. Some of my friends, um, when we were growing up, they were like, you know, I want to marry, what was it, the Officer and Gentleman? Remember that movie? Yes. I, yeah. I grew up on Army bases. So some folks wanted to be with guys that are in Army because it's like, they, these officers are definitely going to take us to, take me to the next, you know, and my dad, I was like, I never wanted to be that. I want to make just as much money as they did. Oh. So, yeah, I've always wanted to make my own money. Wasn't always thinking about counting on a guy to take care of me. I always made money since I was little. Always had some type of job. So some women are different, and I want to make money if I had a, my own company. And I'm thinking about starting my own company. It's, you know, I like plants. Yes. So I like, I should, I should start, I should start a plant, you know. I should start my own little spot where I go to people's houses and, well, I go to my friends' houses now. They invite, you know, they're like, come get these plants. Come water them, do what you're supposed to do with them. And I go over and I, we hang out and they pay me in drinks. Huh. <laughs> or, we, or we get, or we exercise, whichever, whichever one. But right, I go that's, over. That's a, that's a big, 
difference between those two activities? It depends on what day of the week. Remember, I go to the guy who I got a, uh, I got, I'm accountable for the weight I gain right now. Okay. A, yeah, so I'm accountable. So it's like, okay, if it's near Monday, it's Saturday or Sunday, I ain't drinking or eating a lot. You know, I'm yeah. doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed, you know, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll have two drinks. I'll be back. Let's, let's go. <laughs> I'll have a shoot <laughs> I'll have what she's having. I have some meatballs. We're going to work that off for the rest of the week, you know. So I'm learning how to, even though he calls that shucking and jiving, he's like, don't be shucking and jiving. But sometimes you got to shuck and jive. So it just depends on when. <laughs> there, there are at least six people in the world who look yeah. exactly like you. Thank There's God. a 90% chance that you'll meet one of them in your lifetime. Yes. I'm What's in you about that statistic? I cannot wait to run into somebody who actually looks like me. <laughs> what? That would be so fun. That would be so fun. To you know, you walking past someone and you're like, who do you actually look like? Now, I have also seen cases um, on like uh, Instagram where twins actually were separated at birth and then they yes. find and see each other later or whatever. And they use it, you know, one of one set of twins grew up like three blocks from each other, went to the same school and one day noticed each other. And they were like, you know, we know we're both, they knew they were adopted, but you know, they found each other. So I would love to run into somebody who looks like me. I don't think I've ever met anyone who looks like me. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think so. I do have a narrow face right in here. Let's go. I was definitely <laughs> a selfie. Selfie. We doing selfies. <laughs> I would love it. A lady posted on social media. This is why I stopped bothering with birthday dinners. Oh. It'll genuine, genuinely break your heart because people don't even have the decency to tell you that they can't make it. Oh, yeah. She said she sent out 10 invitations. Only one friend showed up. Nobody RSVP'd. Okay, even if they did. Yeah, and they don't show up. So, wow. how do you celebrate your birthdays? Is it a grand affair? No. Personally, no. We don't do okay. anything big like that no more. How many of your friends have had a birthday and have invited you? When's the last time you got invited to a birthday? Um, I would say it just was recently. Um, not this, but it was October. Did we you go? To, yeah, it was huge, huge. Dude turned fifty. There was about, I would say, about six hundred people there. That's the last party I went to. Fraternity brother of mine turned fifty, and it was big. Wait, where was that fifty big. party at? Was that down in Georgia? No, <laughs> okay. it was. Uh, it was at the National Harbor. Okay, right. uh, yeah, making sure we were at the National same Harbor. party. Man, it was about six, seven hundred people up in there. It it was just done. It was beautiful. It was yeah. a lot. It was a lot. I was like, there was two people at my birthday. <laughs> 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 Me, my husband, that was it. We just chilled. Go to my favorite yeah, restaurant. I don't do big ones. <laughs> but I wonder, so for this lady, so her expectation was that they were going to show up. Man. What advice would you give her if she came to you and said, so Ursula, do I... Uh, do I reassess who I call friend? Should I take this to heart? You know what you do? You got to see for this case right here. If they didn't call, they didn't say anything. It's kind of like it's already done. But you, when you're there in that moment, you're sitting there, you know, first 30 minutes go by. No one showed up. And the next 30 minutes go by, just you and that person. Guess what? We're not going to have dinner right here. We're going to go to the bar. And everybody at that bar is going to sing happy birthday to me. That's my party. But that's me. That's how I think. Be like, okay, you know what? My friends didn't show up. Come on, we're going to take our dinner. We want to have it at the bar. Because people at the bar are always friendly. Yes. You get to the bar, be like, it's my birthday, y'all. Guess what? They're buying you birthday drinks all night. And somebody, they're all going to sing happy birthday to you. You just turned a negative situation into a positive. And it Probably seems doesn't. like that would work. That's I'm not walking away from a person that approaches me at the bar. I'm participating. I, I I'm really think I am. Yeah. People at the bar are always friendly. Everybody's drinking. They're in a good mood. You know, unless it's, you know, some other craziness going on. But people at the bar are going to be friendly. They're going to be like, 
You got you. She don't even have to tell them. I invited a bunch of friends and they didn't show up. She don't even gotta do that. Don't even de- you know make your dull your moment with that. Just go there and be like, it's my birthday. I want to sit at the bar with all of you. They gonna celebrate. They gonna start clapping. Be like, happy birthday all mm-hmm. night long. And guess what? They're all there. Have your have yourself a little something to eat. Have your drink because somebody gonna see you drinks all night. Yes. This for the birthday girl. This for the birthday girl all night long. Turn that phone upside have- down. Turn it into yeah, a party right. situation. Yeah. Or they I can like sit at the advice. table. Yeah. No. Nobody wants to sit at the table. Tout the whole time. Like I can't believe they didn't come. You don't want to eat at that point. <laughs> Shit. They gonna miss out. They missed out. And you know what? You do. You you just let them know. You know what? You were you were missed. I had a real good time. Yeah. But they don't need to because unless they conspired with each other and said we are not going. That's a different story. Ooh, then yes, yeah. you need to reassess. That's when you reassess friendships. But if they didn't even, you know, all get together, they don't know who came and who didn't go. Yeah. Because they didn't show up. So I just be like, you were missed, but we had a great time without you. When I say we, me and all the strangers I met at the bar, she don't know that or they don't know that. So before we I'm get off, I gotta ask you one more question though. Let's go. Go on social media, it went viral. You are again, air quotes, her friend. You see it or yeah. uh, it gets out and someone comes to you. Now, how do you feel as one of those friends and you know you got one of the invites? No, you didn't. You what know. do you say? What do you say, Ursula, to her? Because you know you yeah. got the invite. Do you apologize? Yeah. Yes. First, Why? before you apologize, because, you know, if I if I sent the RSVP and say, yes, I'm going to be there and I did not show up and I didn't call or text her and say, I'm not going to be able to make it. And she reserved a table. First of all, the restaurant ain't gonna sit you. You got 10 friends, friends coming. They're gonna be like, is your whole party here? No? Mm, okay. Well, yep. come back up here when your whole party's here, honey. Yes, they do. So that's, when, <laughs> so that's when you go to the bar anyway. But I would definitely felt bad and I would have definitely addressed it with her. And whatever excuse I had, I would have, for me, I would have definitely had to have had an excuse. Cause I'm going, first of all, it's a party. Give me a minute. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'm going to a party now. <laughs> <laughs> so if I didn't show up, something had to have happened where I didn't get a chance to show up. The last one, one party I didn't show up and I did RSV. I did RSVP that was coming. And it was like a costume party it was last year around Halloween time. But yeah. My, yeah. my baby puppy passed away on the 29th and Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't RSVP. I did RSVP and say I was going to be there, but I didn't call and I didn't come. And later on, I let her know. I'm sorry I wasn't able to show up. But you know, she ain't short of friends. My girl had a good party. Okay. Uh, you know, she okay. had, yeah, she, she wasn't out. It was always at her house. She always has really good big parties. I was like, she wasn't looking for me like that. It's okay. So, Wait, I was going to leave this alone, but you made me think of something else too. Now, if we are good friends, like you knew your friend or you assumed your friend was still going to have a good turnout. Yeah. We know this. We know, well, this is a lady. We know this lady. Yeah. She ain't got a big circle. She ain't thick like oh. that. And we let her, we let her down. Does that, does that change anything? Like, shouldn't we have known she needs us? Yeah. Shouldn't and we if have you, known that? Yeah. If she, if you know, if you know her well enough, I mean, first of all, I can see her and say, I do have, I could, could invite 10 friends. I think all of them would come through and show up. But if you invite it, you're, that's your circle and they're small like that. And you invited 10 friends and they didn't show up. Everybody owe her apology. One friend showed, and the one friend that showed up, let me tell you, I promise you, that's the friend that's on the phone on her way home calling everybody else who did not show up. You know, why didn't you show up? Where was you? Where was you going? <laughs> you needed, you call and say for apologize. We, we had a good, even though she had a good time with the birthday girl at yeah. the bar. But that's the you friend still, that rides with that's you. That's the friend that rides with you. That's the friend that's going to call everybody out and say, you ain't about shit. Why didn't you show up? Where was you doing? What was so yeah. important? So Somebody got to say it for her. Somebody's going to say it for her. So I think that one friend that did show up. So hopefully that's the friend that called everybody. What did she do? What did, what happened with her? What did she do? I, she, she I, went viral. I didn't see a follow up from her. Yeah. Um, she just said but she just said ten, she invited ten friends and they didn't show up. Yeah. And man, don't be down on yourself. You got to make the best of it. Let me tell. You, I can go anywhere by myself. Sit. I, I literally did last week. 
I went to a spot to pick up some uh, turkey, a turkey leg. So I went to the spot to go get a turkey leg. Next door is the, um, you know, the bags of crab meat, the bags of crab and shrimp and um, sausage and eggs and all that. So that place was bumping. The music was bumping. I was like, well, I got a 20 minute wait on this food. Let me just head next door and see what they do. So I went next door and sat at the bar, 20 minutes, chilled hard, talked to five or six people, bopping. I was like, this is the vibe up in here. It had me one little drink. And I was like, dang, my little watch went off. I said, well, let me go back and take and get my food, <laughs> pick up my food and I headed on home. But I sat there and I enjoyed myself, you know? That's me. Not everybody can walk in the room and just be like, hey, how y'all doing? That's all you have to say to us, though, when you get to the bar. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that starts a whole combo, combo right there. I don't see I I have her Twitter handle. I don't see a follow-up. Man, I hope it worked out. I hope that friend that did show up got on the horn and let everybody else know that was messed up. But she did say, I wish y'all would go to hell. Uh with a with an emoji, a crying emoji laughing crying and then yeah. some person named alpha dog greg said i definitely would have showed up for that birthday dinner yeah. so that look everybody you know you're doing that right oh yeah i would have been there if i would have gotten invited i would have been there does that yeah, help after, after the fact no no that's after the fact uh, uh it's too late now <laughs> it's after yeah. the fact um, okay it's sad. I wonder who those other friends were. Just like um, the, I did see one TikTok, like they were talking about a girl. This guy recorded these girls talking about one of their friends and talking about her like a dog. He said, look here, I'm going to put this out there. If you out there and you know these girls, they are not your friend because they, they were talking trash about her. And guess what? The Twitter world, the TikTok world found her. It was TikTok, on TikTok. They found her and they let her know. And she posted a video. Now, she did not have to come forward and say, oh, they were talking about me. Because they were talking trash about her. She was like, oh, OK, you're right. Those are not my friends. So Ooh. maybe so maybe she's thinking their friendship is more from her end than what they're thinking on their end. They're like, yeah, that's somebody I work with. You know, uh, they all right. You know, they're not. That's not their friend for real. It's the age old adage: Don't say nothing about nobody you wouldn't say to their face. You gotta live like that. Okay, That's I say to the face. With the, with the, with the, everybody got a smartphone. Yeah, you'll get. I say it to the face. Okay, because I the world shrunk. Because the world what shrunk? It shrunk thanks to social yeah. media, as proven by that case. That's right. And then people can find you. People can find you anywhere. They'll be like, uh, who cares? I'm gonna tell. I'm going if you can't say it, I've always kind of lived by that. And that got me in trouble. Got me, I lost friends behind that. But I also got a smart mouth. <laughs> so you know the dance. That. <laughs> I, I, I can just mouth. imagine when so, you get when you get going, <laughs> the heat is coming. I, I had to learn that because when I first moved from California uh -huh. and to, over here near DC. You got to learn how to talk back and, you know, Joan a little. Yes. Uh, John. Yeah. I'm sorry, not Joan. John. No, oh, John. oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You definitely <laughs> in the mid-Atlantic region yeah. when you say it that way. Yeah. Hey, John, can, can we talk a little Corey? <laughs> yeah, that's my book. <laughs> <laughs> not your Corey. Okay. Not Corey. Okay. okay. Tia <laughs> Mallory and Corey's divorce settlement allows Tia to keep their $4.3 million home and That's prohibits cool. both of them from introducing new romantic partners to their children. How does that is there, like, is there a timeline on that? Like, yes, is there, is, six what's the months timeline? is the timeline. Six months. They got to wait uh, six months before they introduce I don't blame new them. romantic partners. What's if, they agree, if they agree to that, I say absolutely. Because they have small kids, right? Yes. They have small kids. Small kids latch on to people quickly. So, you know, you introduce your, is this person, you know, um, you know, good vibes and the kids like them. And then all of a sudden you and that person break up. That kid is asking you about that person for the longest time. 
Okay, we're so and so. We're so. Ursula, I disagree with you because what you're yeah. saying is that other person in the relationship. What are they, an idiot? They're just gonna bring every Tom, Dick, and Harry around, just some no name person. I mean, of course, they intend to think it's gonna last. After so we after have to after. trust that they're smart enough with who they bring around, right? Right, right. But you don't think you still don't think that it would be a, a great attachment for the youngin. I think um I think the six month waiting period is a good idea. You know. It a lot of the comments on social media about this, a lot of people had opinions, and a lot of people directly threw a lot of anger saying it's petty, it's childish. No, nah. nah. because you, you gotta look at it this way. Number one, they were weren't they in a relationship for like 20 something years? It it was a very long time. A very long time. So that means neither of them have been out, they weren't cheating on each other. They just grew apart and they was like, okay, we we need to separate, we're going to divorce. Okay. So here's the thing. Probably neither one of them have dated for a long time. So you gotta get back out there in the dating pool. You gotta figure out what you like, what you don't like, you gotta figure out who you like, who you don't like, what's your type. So if you're gonna be dating a few different people during this, you know, first time that you're back out dating, you don't want to bring the first thing home that you start dating. Because that right there is just, I don't know, it's not jump off. What is that? What is that after you break out with somebody? It's the um, rebound. You know, that's the rebound. Or that's, oh, that's the one you, that's the one you would just have a good time with. You know, that's the bartender that fed you drinks all night. That's a quick little <laughs> song. <You know? laughs> We ain't gonna see each other again, so no need yeah. to introduce yeah. you to my kids. I'm not taking you to my home. That's the lady that came up to you at the bar and said it was her birthday, and you got her there a couple of back. That's that lady. Yeah, a couple of That's that lady. There's no reason to take her home and introduce her to the kids. She can't wake up in in the house. Okay, we yeah. go out. We, you know, keep it going. So you're gonna have a few of those before you meet something, some quality, and before you know you. They got to go out and sow their oats and have a good time yeah, first. Yeah. So that take about six months. And then you might meet somebody within that six months. And then you introduce that person to your kid. Once you introduce someone to your kids, it's a big deal. Because that kid's going to see you and that person hugging and kissing. And or that person feeling, touching you. Which the kid is going to look at like, my daddy used to do that with my mommy. You're trying to break my mommy and daddy up because they're trying to figure out, you know, a month later, mommy's with a new man. A month later, daddy's with a new woman. It's like, wait a minute. You know, that confuses kids. So yes. the best thing to do, six months down the line, you know, and you've explained it. Everybody's comfortable. Everybody's into a routine. Mommy, and dad, you know, the dad gets the kids on whenever. The mom gets the kids whenever. Personally, I always said, if we broke up when those kids was young, I was leaving him with those kids. I was, I'm out. <laughs> he, made, he, made, he made more money than me. He can get a nanny. He'd be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll be good. He'll be good. He'll be good. The, the, kids, the kids agreed with me, too. They was like, yeah, I'm just going to I would stay here with dad. Because <laughs> dad got more money. Because remember, they've been to the store with me. Do, do. <laughs> <laughs> they know. They know, the, they know which one to pick. Okay. They know which one. You better stay with your daddy. You know it's good for you. Uh-uh. Okay, I'm going to read something to you. Tell me how I hit you. It doesn't matter if it's the first child or the 10th child. It's an awesome miracle every time. Everyone is home now and everyone is good. Philip Rivers, he was an NFL quarterback, on welcoming his 10th child. She was busy. Did they have a TV? Girl, get you a TV. Good <laughs> Lord. You were just pregnant for it. Yeah, since like high school, if that you're helped. Like you're like pregnant for 11 years. I wonder if these kids are coming out every year. Were they coming out every year? Because that means she's pregnant every year. But, but that's part of the problem is, you know, th this was, I mean, he had a long career. He came in with like Peyton Manning to the NFL. You know what I mean? That's, that's, a, he, he's an old dude. It's so she it's was having babies way. like, even if it's not every year, but every other year. She still was pregnant for a very, very long time. And yeah. you know, to be truthful, a lot of people don't understand, hmm, you know how much it, of our body and our everything it takes to make a human brain, make those 10 fingers, those 10 toes. People don't think about that. I'm like, you know what? It takes a lot to make a human brain. Don't stress me out. 
<laughs> yeah. I used yeah. to say that when I was pregnant. I'm, I'm making a human brain right now. Leave me alone, okay? It takes a lot. Just me and God. Nobody else is helping me with this. Leave me alone. So she was pregnant for a long time. So let's say there was every other year. That means that sucks too because that means she was pregnant for almost like, what, 20 years? Yes. It's a no for me. Guess what? She, he never worried about her messing around. Never no. worried about her hanging out with the girls. He's too busy with all these dang on kids. She is, she is strapped. Nope. She, she is chained to that house. And okay. Then soon, soon as she gets one off of this breast, she got a brand new one on yep. the other breast. Yep. She ain't got time for it. Nope. 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 Not in. <laughs> I want to know if you are in agreement with me, because I feel like I'm getting really cranky nowadays with my single friends. And I'm a ticking time bomb. And I don't think people without kids understand just how much free time they have. I don't want to hear them complaining about nothing. What say you about my crankiness? You're going to have to let it go because you made your choices. Your single friends have made their choices. You can't be mad at them because you feel like you don't have nothing to do. Okay. You're up there puzzling. And you know, going skiing, and you're, there, you're looking at them like you're doing a whole bunch of fun shit. And you know, they but they're going to bed, they might be a little lonely, and they're just or they're telling you about their day, and you're thinking to yourself, Man, I've been changing diapers all day. This kid's sick, or this kid is cranky, or the, you know, you got to look at it this way your life is your life, their life is this, their life. When you got when you guys get a chance to get together, let them talk, they're talk, it's okay. It's all good. Let them talk. Because I mean, some of our friends looking at us now, because a lot of our friends are empty nesters, and some of our new friends aren't empty nesters. They're young parents, and they come over there like, Your house is so clean. Like, yeah, it's just the two of us. We ain't got nobody, <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got nobody to mess up the house, you know? They'd be like, There's no toys on the floor. And yeah, we ain't got no babies like that. Okay, mm -hmm. if, you come, if you come over my house, bring your kids with you, that's fine. Bring them some toys, because I don't got nothing to entertain your child. You ain't got nothing? Nothing. You got no Jenga at least, no Connect I got, 4? I got games, but you know what? They got adult symbols and adult games on them. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 I do have Uno. I got Uno and I got some Jenga, but you know what? I look at it this way. Kids throw Jenga. I've yep, learned they do. Okay. They're going to throw it. And I guess what? Before you leave, hold on, get your kids. Hey, y'all pick this stuff up. But I also have a good run around where they could just run around in circles. And people be like, no, no, don't run. And I'm like, let them run. Don't you want this kid tired when you go home today? Yeah. Yes, they let do. Let them run as much as they want. They ain't going to hit nothing. They see all the corners. Everything got a little roundness to it. It's not going to like, bang into something. When yeah. I see parents pushing their kids in strollers at like a big event, why? Make that kid get out and push that stroller until he can't push it no more. Because you let this kid relax in that stroller while you pushing them uphill, you are gonna be tired. And when you get home, that kid's rested all day and they are ready to go. But if yep. you make them walk the whole event, you know, they are gonna be tired. So it's, you gotta look at it that way. I'm, I always tell, uh, I told my cousin, she's a brand new mom. I said, look here, when the baby sleep, you sleep. Okay, yeah. no matter what, because she said she couldn't get this baby to sleep. When the baby sleep, you sleep with the baby. Don't worry about the dishes. Don't worry about the laundry, cleaning of the floors, cleaning in the bathroom. When the baby sleep, you sleep. When the baby's up, you do those things, clean up and all that stuff. Yeah. So when the baby sleep, you sleep so you can get just as much rest as the baby. Not you working as soon as the baby goes to sleep, you running around trying to clean everything. Uh huh. And then, and guess what? If your place is junky and you got unexpected visitors, and when they come over, you know what you do? Put their ass to work. I'm so glad you came by. Can you come over here and help me with these dishes? I'm going to talk to you while you, while you do my dishes. First, you really going to ask them for their assistance? 100%. 100%. What if they just got their nails done? You came over to visit me and my brand new baby and see my brand new baby? Can you go ahead and get the broom and mop real quick? Let's do it. I just need you to help me with this. I'm a, and I appreciate that because when people say, do you need anything? They are just saying, do you need anything? But they don't really want to do it. I thought you just told me to let the let the single people be, let them frolic. If they come, if they come into your house, you them to work on chores. If they come to your house, if your single friends come over your house, put their ass to work. Be like, come on over here, man. I need you to help me with something in the garage real quick while we talking. 
you go help yeah. me with this in the garage. And or you look at them and be like, you pick up two toys off the floor and say, hey, hold this. Why are you talking? They let them talk as you start handing them toys. Yeah, walk this way with me. Go and put that in the <laughs> they, You know, let them help you. But if they're just, if y'all are out to dinner because you got a babysitter and they're on a date and it's a double or whatever, or a little party or whatever, and they're talking, let them talk their talk. You just listen and be like, that's beautiful. And you know what they, you got that they don't have? They may be going to bed every night with somebody, but you going to bed with someone that loves you, you love them back. They know your middle name, you know their yes. middle name. You go snuggle, cuddle, and talk in the morning. And they, you know, some single friends are not going to have that. And they, that's what they're looking for. Some of them, not yeah. all of them. Yeah. Ursula, all of them. Um, I'm never coming over to visit. <laughs> hey, I ain't got no little kids. My no, no, no. No, no, no. You, you share the wealth. If, if, if you're behind on tasks, you may ask for some assistance. Absolutely. Yeah, I, you just reminded me, anybody I know that got babies, I'll be yeah. by when y'all hit the pre-K stage. See, that's what I tell people. They're like, you going to babysit? No. Nah, I'd rather sweep and, and clean, help you clean your house than babysit your kids. Yes. I don't want. I don't want. Especially if there's a diaper change involved. What? Oh no! Don't, don't bring. No. Don't bring them and drop them off at my house if they don't know how to use the bathroom on their own. I don't feel no. like it. Can't do it. Can't do it. I don't want to. Ursula, we hit our time. This was great. We we didn't even get all our topics, but that's that's good. Oh man. No, that's man. good. I'm I'm happy about that. We will save those for the next time. Fly Eagles fly. Congratulations on a huge win this week over the Kansas good. City Chiefs. It was a good fight. That yes. Was a good fight. And, and y'all came out the victors. Yeah. Yeah. If there yeah. is anything else I would say is towards the back end of the season, when y'all get some blowouts, when y'all get some chance, get your yeah. quarterback out the game. Y'all playing for the postseason at this point. Y'all are like right. two or three games ahead of like the closest people that could catch. I know Dallas still technically could catch you guys, but uh, yeah, protect the quarterback. No, I don't even think he needs these quarterback sneaks. I think you could bring in um, the, the the Hawaiian dude. Uh, Man, he he won I, the high played at Oregon. What's his name? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> the backup could do it. We good. Yeah, the put backup. the backup in. Backup. Yeah. Yeah, we just get him, get him out there for a little bit. Mariota, yeah. that's his name. Yeah, Marcus Mariota. He was in Atlanta last year, but y'all got him now. So have a great night. Enjoy Thank the you, holiday. Man. Thanks for coming on. You have a good night too. Enjoy the holidays, and you know, be nice to your single friends. <laughs> <laughs> no like guarantee. I'll, I'll work on it. I'll work on it. Have a good one. You too. Bye.